Have you been watching a lot of cost of living videos and people are quoting all of these numbers for things like dining out, gas, etc. And at the end, you really have no idea what this means for you. Well, stay tuned because in this video, I will show you what your life will look like using this easy method. Now, everyone on YouTube asks you to subscribe at this point, and I want you to as well, but not because I want a bunch of subscribers. I post videos about moving to Massachusetts, the housing market, and buying and selling real estate. So if you want to know about these things and you can stand to listen to me, go ahead and subscribe. And I also do post links for freebie worksheets in each of my videos. So if you want those, you can find those here too. So let's get started. After moving from two states, from California to New Mexico, traveling for work in Arizona and Texas, and then moving to South America for a year, basically I think everyone wants to know, based on my salary, can I afford to do the things I like to do, which everyone's desires are different. So at the end of the day, you want a nice place to live, you can play, you can have fun, travel according to when and where you want to go, save for retirement, enjoy where you are living. I think every cost of living video talks about how they have the best food and it's beautiful and there is weather. Okay, I think this is pretty true for most areas. You can find something nice in every place. But in return for all of these things, where does Massachusetts rank? Not surprisingly, it ranks number one in a lot of categories. And I'm not partial either because I'm a transplant with a critical urban planning eye. Now stay till the end because I have a bonus that no one else will mention it in any of these other YouTube videos. Step one is housing cost. So for a $70,000 salary, it will be very hard for you to buy a house, anything more than a starter home. And I'm basically talking about a two to three bedroom house, a thousand to 1500 square feet. If you want something grander, then you will either need a second income or more money to put down so your mortgage payments will be about 28% of your debt to income ratio. The further you are away from Boston, meaning past the 95 Beltway or the 495 Beltway, the more house you get for your money and the average cost of the housing depends on what county you will live in. Here in Essex County where I live, right now in 2020, the average housing cost was 624,000 and in 2019 it was 551,000. In Middlesex County in 2020, the average cost of a house was 795,000 and in 2019 it was 736,000. So why the fluctuation? Well, the housing cost is directly in correlation to the schools. But before we leave housing, let's talk about utility costs because everyone needs heat here in the winter. It's cold. So when you're looking at houses, you have several options. You either have oil, gas, propane, and electric. And yes, some houses have electric heat. But if you look at the national average, see here on this chart, you will see that the average utility cost, the fluctuation in these costs, it's not all that different. I think what's really saying is it depends on where you live. If you live in a hot climate where you need air conditioning in the summer or if you need heat in the winter. So this might be a consideration really on the type of house you buy rather than if you choose to move to Massachusetts or not. You will have these expenses no matter where you live. Another cost of living component could also be on selecting the town that provides their own electricity. In some towns in Massachusetts, they provide their own electricity and this can make a big difference on an electric bill. Step two is schools. The public school budget is the largest part of all town budgets. So the housing costs are dependent in large part as to how much the schools are funded and how much tax revenue the town has to spend on schools. Those nuances and idiosyncrasies of the town and the housing costs, they really reflect in the school systems. But guess what? While we have expensive housing relative to the rest of the nation, and we are the third most expensive state in the nation for housing, however, we are number one in schools. Why does this make a difference at the elementary, middle school, and high school level? Well, in order to get into college, there are tons of colleges here, and everyone knows about Harvard and MIT, but there are lots of others. And the UMass system, which is our public system, has several campuses. So you have a lot of in-state tuition opportunities, whereas in other states, there might just be two public systems, not a lot of choice. 
For example, in New Mexico, the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque and New Mexico State in Las Cruces are the two public options. Now, if you prefer to go to a private institution for college, the in-state tuition doesn't apply, but typically those schools have endowments and they also have in-state consideration. But check with the college or university you are eyeing as these things change over time. Additionally, if you want to pursue a master's degree or a PhD, the city of Boston is close enough for you to make the trek for a couple of years until you get that advanced degree. If traditional college is not your cup of tea, there are high schools with trade schools that focus specifically on the trades, which is absolutely amazing. And let's face it, not everyone is going to be a renowned scientist that requires you to go to college. No matter what, if you have kids, our public school systems are pretty cool. Step three is taxes. Okay, they call it tax Massachusetts. And that's because the property taxes are high because the housing cost is high. There's sales tax and income tax, both around five to 6%. Also in Massachusetts, clothing and essential food like milk and eggs are not taxed. It's just all the stuff we're not supposed to eat. So I guess that could be a deterrent. What's funny about this is, is that Taxachusetts is really a myth. According to TurboTax, the highest personal income tax states are these. And the highest property taxes are all in New Jersey. The highest sales taxes are these states. And then when you combine both the sales tax and income tax, here are the leaders. Guess what? Massachusetts is not any of them. Step four, fun, play, and your hobbies. So this can be from zero dollars to sky's the limit. And I'd like to show you a little bit of each. So let's say you like to bike ride. Well, you have to buy a bike and there's no extra cost for bike riding except the bike and the sales tax. Now, if you already own one when you move here, then I guess it's pretty much for free. If you like to hike or walk, there's tons of open space and hiking trails all for free. And typically you don't have to pay for parking. If you want to go to a state park, you can buy an annual pass for $30 to $40. Or if you want to go to a national park like Plum Island or the National Seashore, admittance for a whole year is around $25 to $35. And you get into all of the national parks nationwide for that year. The other amazing thing about Massachusetts is we have a lot of waterways. We have oceans, lakes, and rivers. So if you like to fish or fly fish or tube on a river, or if you like to camp at a lake, all those things are basically the cost of equipment. If you're an urbaner like my sister-in-law, she's a city girl. She likes the theater, off-Broadway, ballet, small theater, plays, museums, aquariums, contemporary art, fine art like the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, the site of the grand theft. Horticultural and outdoor gardens are amazing. Now all of these range in price. However, with a public library card that costs a zero dollars, you can get discounts on all of these activities. Free things to do in the city of historic Boston is the cost of a book and some walking. Boston is relatively small and you can walk between the historic places. However, let's be realistic. You might want to stop and get a coffee or a meal along the way. Dining here at a casual restaurant is about $50 for two. And at a high-end restaurant, you're looking at over a hundred. Now, from my perspective, those activities are here and typically within an hour drive. And having lived in a state where you have to get on a plane and travel five hours, plus get to the activity and the hotel, well, it's a good deal when you live here. here. And who doesn't like a good deal? We, the American people, have made Amazon and Walmart rich by buying good deals. But the number one fun in Massachusetts is our sports. This is a sports town and they love to win. We have all kinds of local people with all kinds of opinions about sports and they talk about it incessantly on the radio. But that's because the culture exists here. Now you don't have to like the sports, but you have a choice if you do football, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, and tennis. All of these sports, you can either go to the game, which during the regular season is about $70 a ticket, or at the playoffs, usually around 200 per ticket. And then of course the food is more. Here are the latest costs for a game at Fenway, which is where the Red Sox play. And here is for the garden where it is basketball and hockey. Then of course we have Gillette Stadium, which is home of the Patriots. So if you're economical, you stay home and watch the game or you invite friends over. Number five is healthcare. When you are sick, 
and I have been really sick when we lived in New Mexico and I almost died. So when you're in that situation, you want the best. You want the smartest doctor. You want the one who is going to get the disease early. You want treatments and the guidance to fight the problem. And what is amazing is that if you think about this, it's a think tank here with world-class service available to you just for living here. It's the kind of cost of living that is hopeful and there is no price on yours or your family's health. We do pay for it through our insurance and if you, your employer doesn't pick up the cost, you're looking at about a couple thousand dollars a month for a family of four. However, while we pay for it, we do have access to the best. So here's the bonus. If you have kids and you need child care from age infant to four years old because at age five the kids go to school, it's about $35,000 for two kids. However, others choose not to do this because it's a temporary situation and after the kids get into school, they have their after school activities. Lots of people want to work again. Some school districts, if you choose full-time kindergarten, charge you for that service. So you have to look at the town and the after school activities. There are some after school activities in elementary and middle school, but not a lot. So if you have, say, a budding artist, those activities are typically something that is paid for outside of the school system. And in general, a lot of these activities are for each season, and I would budget around $300. When the kids get into high school, there are sports clubs, but no too, there are only so many spots on the sports team, and also some clubs are limited as to the size. So a lot of people go into private classes. So there you have it the cost of living to be number one. I love living here and let me tell you a secret. If you really want to love where you live, come to the North Shore. It's to die for. I'm Julie Marion with Hoddle Real Estate and if you are looking for a real estate agent, I would love to help you. Call, text, or email me. Here at Hoddle Real Estate, we buy and sell every home as it is our own. Make it a great day.